was, was fantastic. Sean, I want to ask you a question. The Wizard of Oz, Tommy Rogic. Mm. Oh, I knew you were going to get into this. Talk, talk, me, talk <laughs> me through him. What's your thoughts on Tommy Rogic? Simply sensational. The man that plays in his slippers. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I can say. That goal at the weekend, Diego Maradona would have applauded that. That mm. was sensational. I just, I don't know, there was people writing him off in the last number of years saying he could never play, he could only play 60 minutes. Yep. He's playing 90 minutes back to back, yep. week in, week out, and he's getting better week in, week out. Let's have a listen to Ange yeah. talking about him here. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, I do know him well. And he's he's one of these special footballers. Where when the ball goes to him, I think everyone just stops and sees what he's going to do because uh, you want to be paying attention. That's not the time to... Uh, be looking down on your phone or taking a drink. You, you want to stop everything you're doing. And uh, please, he got his goal today. He's, he's probably that's the area he's let himself down a little bit so far this year. He's had some good opportunities, so um, I'm pleased he got the reward. Yeah, he's got his goal, Craig's, and it's got it's got to be on the list for goal of the season, hasn't that already? Yeah, I mean, he's now got a manager who understands him and can get the best out of him. And I think that's the, the biggest compliment you can pay Hans Postecoglou because Tom Rogic was was one of those players where. Uh, Sean was saying where oh, he can't do this he can't do that whereas Ange Postacoglu is focused on what he can do how he can impact the game and I think Sunday showed the responsibility that the players are taking they realised that one of their key players Jota was missing so it needed the rest of them just to up their game a little bit in the final third with their creativity and their work rate and their passes and, and there's no doubt Turnbull and Rogic stepped up McGregor stepped up you know Kyogo was dynamic as he is, ever is um, he's you know, I, I said previously, I think Tom Rogic makes players around him better mm. because he's always looking to take the ball. He's always got time in the ball. Yep. He's just, he, he, it's natural for him. He wants to go forward. You know, playing back the way isn't in his repertoire. He thinks, no, I'm going forward. I want to hurt the opposition. And it must be great for forwards to make runs. It must be great for David Turnbull to get himself into the forward area because he knows he's going to find him. Mm. And the, I, mean, I said it last week, Rob, the amount of times that Turnbull passes to Rogic, Rogic passes to Furuhashi, Furuhashi passes back to Turnbull because they trust each other. They sense... They're good players. They know top class players know top class players. And that trio certainly at the weekend were bang at it. And I think when Turnbull and Rogic are at it, there's no one in this country will stop that duo going forward. So that's why the old firm game come the second of January is going to be so intriguing because we're talking about Rangers being well structured now under Giovanni Van Bronckhurst and, and hard to beat. Celtic are a different level from what they were at Ibrox early in the season. This is going to be an absolute classic. But Tom Rogic is a star player. And I think Sean Callum McGregor's gone to a new level as well, hasn't he? Absolutely, yeah. He's, the man is an absolute Rolls Royce. He's getting better week in, week out, not just as a player. I feel as if he's took that captain's role and made it his own. He's been absolutely sensational. He, he, he doesn't even break sweat half the time. Mm. He's, he's been excellent. And he's, just, he's so under the radar as well. Not, you wouldn't look at a game with Callum McGregor and pinpoint things that he does. He just mm -hmm. he just keeps the game ticking, ticking along nicely. It's just He's a, he's a joy to watch. He's... he's Phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, we were talking on the show last night about, you know, it's almost like he's emerged from the shadow of Scott Brown to a certain extent and he's embracing the, the captaincy, Craig. Um, and he is, he, Callum McGregor is a magnificent midfielder at the moment. I think he's been absolutely brilliant this season. Um, you know, for, for a player that has played so much football uh, and I think, you know, talking about the back end of last season, we're saying that this boy needs a rest. This boy needs a rest, you know, the amount of football that he's played. But all of a sudden, he's, uh, under Ange Postacoglu, taken a, a new lease of life. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the captain's armband means a lot to him. Um, and he's he's doing an amazing job. He's energy. Um, and when the team has needed a lift for whatever reason in certain games, it's maybe fallen a little bit flat. He's been that man um, that has brought the performance and the result to life. So, look, he's he's been incredible. And I'm also really, really pleased. Uh, and I'm going back to my Aussie mate, uh, Tommy. I'm really, really pleased for him because I used to laugh when people say he's a 60-minute player. Mm. You know, I think I've said it loads of times on the radio. Um, the boy can play 90 minutes. There's no doubt in that. His ability uh, to, to score goals, to create goals, um, to be a constant threat, uh, we, we, we've we all seen. So I'm just delighted that he's actually now knocking out those minutes because I feel as if he deserves that because he was pigeonholed as a 60-minute player. Mm -hmm. 